Okay, yeah, so my name's Dirk. Uh, I work on BitSwap at IPFS. And today I'm going to be talking about some of the changes that have come uh, with the new BitSwap, BitSwap 1.2. So basically the headline items are that you should get a lot less duplicate blocks coming over your network. And the reason for that is we can now, instead of just asking for a block, we can ask who has the block. So we can be a little bit more specific in how we direct our requests. And secondly, you should expect uh, files to get transferred faster. That's partly because we have a little bit less aggressive rate limiting. And it's also because when we find out if someone doesn't have a block, then we can go and ask everyone else, hey, do you have this block instead? So just to dive a little more into how this all works. So this is gonna describe the old bit swap and then I'll, I'll talk about the new updates. So in the old bit swap, the way the discovery worked was when IPFS asks BitSwap for a file, the first uh, block that I asked for is called the root block of the DAG. And so uh, BitSwap would send out a request to all of the peers that it's connected to and say, hey, uh, give me the root block. And then if none of them have the root block, then it would go out and ask the DHT. So once some peers respond and say, yes, I have that block, it's what puts them into what's called a session. And the session is just a way of grouping together some peers who are likely to have all of the blocks in a particular file. So any subsequent requests go to those peers. So once we have some peers in our session, then for subsequent requests, we send out a want message to peers sort of selectively. And I'll talk in a minute how we do that. And the peers remember, okay, this guy wants these blocks. So if I come across those blocks or if I have them in my data store, I'm going to send them through. So in the old bit swap, the way that we, we would decide which ones to send to which peers is we would kind of split up the ones into groups and we would send a whole group to several peers. And so of course, if several peers had that particular block, they would all send it back and we'd get a lot of duplicates. So we would kind of like adjust the, uh, the number of once in each group to try to maintain a balance between getting too many duplicates versus getting a decent transfer ratio. So in the new bit swap, we've added some protocol extensions that instead of asking for a block directly, we can ask, does this peer have the block? Um, so typically what we'll do is when we get a request from IPFS, we'll send what we call a want have to all peers saying, hey, do you have this block? and optimistically we'll ask one of the peers for the block. And then if that peer doesn't have it, then we'll go out and we'll ask one of the peers who does have it. So how do we choose which peer to send that optimistic want block to? So by the way, the optimistic want block is to try to reduce round trip times as much as possible. If we can, we'll just ask for it directly. So basically in order to choose which uh, peer to send that want block to, we prioritize peers that have told us they have the block. And if there are no peers, or if they all tell us that they have it, then we select the peer probabilistically according to whichever peer has sent us the most blocks in the past for this session. So that sort of optimizes for peers who have the lowest latency and the highest bandwidth. So there's only three minutes, so I sort of raced through it quickly, but just to talk about some results. So Stephen uh, showed some of these slides earlier on. But basically you can see on the left hand side, we have the time to fetch on the y-axis versus the file size on the x-axis. And the, each line is asking, it's when uh, one bit swap here is asking either one seed, two seeds or four seeds uh, for a file. So the blue lines are the old bit swap and you can see that they're much higher than the red lines, which are the new bit swap, meaning that the new bit swap is able to retrieve blocks faster. On the right-hand side, uh, we have some graphs of duplicate blocks. And as Stephen mentioned earlier, uh, the old bit swap used to get quite a lot of duplicate blocks, but there are, there are actually no red lines on the graph because there's essentially no duplicate blocks in most scenarios. So as I say, that was a super quick roundup. Um, but in summary, uh, you can expect with the new bit swap to get better transfer speeds and a lot less duplicate blocks coming across your network. Thank you.